Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Game of Thrones Season 8, The Final Season. Jon and Daenerys make it to Winterfell, but Sansa's not happy to see them. The Northern Lords all made Jon king in the north, but now he's gone and bent the knee to this random girl. Jon's like, hey, everyone chill out. Daenerys is awesome, and I'm not just talking about in bed, cause we're totally doing it. Daenerys has her two dragons with her, and Jon's like, hey, do you think I can ride one? Which button do I press? Oh, I'm flying on a dragon. It's super epic. He and Daenerys sing a whole new world from Aladdin. These two are crazy in love. Nothing could tear them apart. Except Bran knows the secret of Jon's true parentage. Sam fills Jon in on what we learned last season. He's not the bastard of Ned Stark at all. He's the trueborn son of his sister Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen. Jon's like, oh my god, I've been boning my aunt. Sam's more concerned about the fact that he's the true heir to the Iron Throne. Jon's like, oh yeah, I guess that too. Meanwhile, Jaime Lannister makes it to Winterfell. It's like, hey, where's the Lannister army? We went through all the trouble last season of going beyond the wall to capture a zombie, show it to Cersei so she would join us in the war. Jamie's like, oh, yeah, no, nah, that's not gonna happen. Cersei is totally content to let the army of the dead slaughter them all. She's got new reinforcements. Euron Greyjoy brought over the Golden Company, a powerful mercenary army. Part of Euron's deal for joining her is that they'd get married, so these two bang. Euron's got Yara Greyjoy hostage for all of five minutes before Theon rescues her. She's like, well, I don't really have anything to do this season. I'm just gonna piece right out of the show. So they're planning the battle against the White Walkers. Jon's like, um, we're way outnumbered. Is there any way we can win? Bran points out that in movies, if you kill the main villain, his army of minions conveniently die. And that's the best plan they got. That night, a bunch of main characters just hang around and drink. Tormund tells the story of how he suckled on giant's milk, and Jamie decides to knight Brienne, one of the truest knights in the series, now officially has a sir. Good for her. Arya Stark finds Gendry. These two are best friends in the early seasons, and he was always super hot, but now she's old enough to appreciate it. She's like, hey, fancy a shag? He's like, whoa, Arya, we're like sisters. Oh, no, okay. Wait a minute, are we getting a sex scene with Arya? We watched her grow up. It's a little weird, but she's like, yo, I'm 22. Google it. And they get it on. John and Danny do not get it on, though. He's like, hey, this is awkward, but I'm your nephew. We can't bang anymore. She's like, uh, I'm more concerned with the fact that you're ahead of me in the line of succession. But their convo's interrupted by the White Walkers. The Battle of the Long Night is here. It's gonna be an epic battle. All our main characters are here. Melisandre shows up. She's like, oh, I can't believe I almost missed this. She lights the Dothraki Oryx on fire. Cool. They're so amped, they charge right in. It's an epic shot. But Jorah's like, wait, is this the best use of our cavalry? Charging right into a zombie horde? Jorah survives along with four total Dothraki. So yeah, maybe not the best idea. And here we go, zombie fight. A horde of them swarming over. All oh, the living don't stand a chance. Luckily, they have dragons. Yes, this is what Game of Thrones has been building up to for eight seasons. Daenerys and Jon riding dragons, burninating the zombies. John wants to take the battle directly to the White Walkers, but they summon a blizzard and nullify the dragon advantage. The good guys light a fire trench, which buys them about five seconds, and then it's zombie battle in Winterfell, Arya with her spear thing, but somehow she ends up wandering around the library. The Hound and Beric come to rescue her, and Beric gets stabbed a million times on the way out. He is dead for good this time, no more revives because he doesn't have a red priest, except Melisandre was actually standing right there. I guess she didn't want to waste the spell slots. Theon is with Bran in the God Wood. They're trying to lure the Night King out. It's like, hey, Bran, do you want to use your warg powers to help somehow? Bran's like, no, I'm good just sitting here. And the Night King arrives, riding on his undead dragon. John and Danny go up to chase him, and it's a dragon battle! Yes, so epic! Except without me lightening it, it looked like this, a lot less exciting. But if you can see it, oh man, it is actually really sweet. Daenerys knocks the Night King off his dragon. He's down on the ground, and it's like, Dracarys! Boom! Dragon fire! Yeah, yeah, this guy's totally dead. Except they do the Dragon Ball Z thing where they wait for the smoke to clear and he's unharmed. So it's all come down to the 1v1 sword fight. Jon Snow versus the Night King. Except the Night King uses his raised dead ability. Everyone that just died is coming back as a zombie. Run, Jon, get to him before it's too late. Oh, oh, it's too late. I guess we just won't have an epic sword fight. Zombies are coming to life all over Winterfell. Down in the crypts with the women and children, Tyrion's got a good buzz on. After his fourth flagon, he's like, wait a second, the enemy can raise the dead. Should we be hiding in the crypts? No, no, you should not. The ancient Starks come back to life and start killing extras. Tyrion's like, yeah, I thought we were smarter than this. The living are getting overwhelmed. Jon makes a beeline for the Night King. That's their only chance of survival, but he's blocked by an undead dragon. So the White Walkers head to the Godswood. Theon gives a foolhardy charge and instantly gets owned. Then the Night King approaches Bran. My ancient enemy, the Three-Eyed Raven. Shall we have a duel for 
the ages. Bran's like, no, I'm kind of good just sitting here. Oh, okay then. But wait, what's this? Out of the mist? Arya leaping in for the kill. Oh, but she stopped. Fool, no man can kill me. I am no man. Drops the dagger and Valyrian steel to the heart. Oh, he explodes. Arya kills the Night King. As predicted, the whole army of the dead was connected to his Wi-Fi, so they all collapse. Incredibly, all our main characters survive. Oh, except Jorah. He got stabbed a bunch. He dead. Melisandre walks out, takes off her magic necklace that keeps her young and hot, and she's so old she disintegrates into dust. Davos is like, ooh, my man Stannis put his D in that. There's a big funeral if you want to cry, and then a party if you want to drink. Tormund finally makes his move on Brienne, but she's not really feeling it. She's into Jamie. Wait, are these two gonna do it? Yeah, they get it on. Even John and Danny going for it again, until he remembers they're related. He's like, man, if I'm gonna bone my aunt, I'm gonna have to get a lot drunker. So the White Walkers are defeated, but now it's time for the war on Cersei. With all of their losses and Cersei's reinforcements, the odds are dangerously even. Daenerys is like, yo, it's no big deal. I still got two dragons. They are a huge advantage. Advantage, unless one gets shot in the chest. Oh, what? Uh, it's just a flesh wound. He'll be fine. Oh, no, in the neck. Yeah, that dragon's dead. It was the cartoon pirate Euron Greyjoy hiding his whole fleet behind a rock. They've got bigger, badder crossbows, and he wipes out Daenerys' fleet. Most of them make it to land, except for Miss Sande, who is captured. He's like, hey, baby, I killed a dragon for you. She's like, thanks and congrats. You got me pregnant. He's like, after just one time, I'm the man. Of course, she is lying to him. We found out she was pregnant last season, it's Jamie's. So Daenerys and Cersei meet. Tyrion's like, hey Cersei, you can't win, just surrender, we'll let you live. If not for yourself, do it for your unborn child. If Euron were a smarter man, he'd wonder how Tyrion knows when he only found out five minutes ago, but Euron is not a smarter man. Anyway, Cersei has no intention of surrendering. She executes Masande right there. Oh, you done messed up. Daenerys is mad now. She's gonna burn the whole city to the ground. Vera steps in like, hey, that's a figure of speech, right? Because remember, there's a million innocent people in there. But Daenerys seems un characteristically unconcerned. Earlier, Jon told his siblings they're actually cousins and he's a Targaryen. Sansa would much prefer Jon as king to Daenerys, so she immediately tells Tyrion. And Tyrion can't keep a secret, so he immediately tells Varys. Now Varys is like, hey Jon, Danny's acting crazy. I think you should be king. But Jon says the only two lines he has this season. I don't want it. She is my queen. Tyrion saw this going down. He's like, hey, Danny, Varys is trying to replace you because you've been acting crazy. She's like, what? Oh, I wouldn't want him to think that. Let me prove I'm fine by burning him alive. Then it's time for the Battle of King's Landing. Cersei's feeling pretty good. She's got the strongest mercenary army in the world. She's got a ton of huge ass crossbows, plus a ton more on the Iron Fleet. Danny can't possibly use Drogon unless she has a good strategy. Turns out she does. It's to fly straight at the Iron Fleet, dodge the one bolt they shoot at her, and then burn the whole thing. No no problem. Okay, but there's a ton more on the city walls. There's no way she can dodge all of those and, oh yeah, actually she does. She takes them all out. But there's still the Golden Company, the strongest, oh, no, yeah, they're taken out too. One shot. So the good guys march in with no resistance. The Lannisters are like, yeah, we clearly lost. We surrender. Ring the bells. So the good guys won. Cut to the epilogue where we see that they live happily ever after. Why is Danny looking like that? She's like, you know what? This battle was way too easy and unsatisfying. I think I'm gonna go burn the surrender Lannister troops and keep it going into civilians. Daenerys, what are you doing? Burn and taking the countryside. Burn and taking the peasants from the Earlier, Arya and the Hound were on an assassination mission to take out Cersei before the battle. Now that Daenerys is destroying the city, that's kind of a moot point. But the Hound still has to fight his evil older brother. The Hound versus the Mountain, it's Clegane Ball! <laughs> Boom, bang, boom, yeah, big fight. Oh, the hound stabs him in the chest, but boom, the mountain don't even feel it. He pulls that sword right out because he's a crazy undead Frankenstein monster. He pulls his signature move, the Oberon head crush, but the hound manages to stab him in the face. Oh, even that doesn't slow him down. So Sandor tackles his brother out of the burning keep and they fall together into the flames below. Also earlier, Jamie wanted to go back to King's Landing to help Cersei. Brienne's like, hold on, you've had a whole redemption arc. Cersei's the worst, you're better than that. He's like, yeah, I mean, I may be a good guy now, but I still wanna bang my sister. Jamie made it to the Red Keep too late, the doors were shut, so he tries to come around the back way. And who should show up but Euron Greyjoy? He's like, hey, Kingslayer, why don't we fight for no reason? Jamie's like, what, but we're on the same side? Oh my God, I'm tackled. Euron stabs him right in the lungs. I mean, that's a death blow, but Jamie's fine, and he stabs Euron. Uh, 
Jamie makes it to Cersei and the twins embrace. They're gonna sneak out the back, but it's already blocked, so the siblings and lovers die in each other's arms. Now, King's Landing is completely destroyed. Jon goes to talk to Daenerys, who looks a lot like an evil queen at this point. He's like, yeah, I mean, she went a little overboard there, but at least now she can rule in peace. Except she's like, hey, that felt good. Let's go conquer the whole world. Tyrion's like, this is not what I signed up for, so he resigns his hand and goes to jail. Then Daenerys makes it to the Iron Throne, what we've been rooting for since season one, just not like this. Jon goes to her. He's like, hey, Daenerys, by the way, burning civilians is not cool. She's like, no, don't worry about it, baby. Their descendants can grow up in a better world that I've created. Jon has to choose between the woman he loves and what's probably best for the world. And it looks like Jon chooses love. These two start smooching. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, he stabbed her in the heart. Jon Snow kills Daenerys. It's an epic sacrifice and he's so sad. Drogon shows up though, like what the F bro? He lashes out and burns not Jon, but the Iron Throne itself. This symbolizes how the quest for power corrupts everyone or whatever. And Drogon picks up Daenerys and they fly off into the distance. Daenerys Targaryen, the unburnt mother of dragons who brought magic back into the world is flying off into the realm of legend. Sometime later, they hold a great council with the remaining lords of Westeros. Grey Worm and the Unsullied have been holding the city in Daenerys' name, but he has no idea what to do. Tyrion's like, hey, I know I'm a prisoner, but I think we should elect a king, and I think it should be Brandon Stark. What? Why him? That's probably the most boring choice. He's like, yeah, I think boring is what the realm needs right now. Bran's like, yeah, sure, whatever, bro. And the other lords are like, yeah, I mean, I guess. Sansa's like, hey, I support you, bro, but I think the North should be independent. Bran's like, yeah, I'm cool with that. The other lords are like, wait, was that an option? But it's too late. They already voted. So all hail King Bran the Broken. Now, what about Jon Snow? His sisters want him freed, but the Unsullied want him executed. So they compromise and they banish him to the Night's Watch. He's like, you've got to be kidding me. So Tyrion is made Hand of the King. They have their first small council meeting. Sam is the Archmaster. He helped write the history book, A Song of Ice and Fire. He's like, trust me, guys, the books are a lot better. Davos is a good dude, so he's Master of Ships. Brienne gets to be Lord Commander of the King's Guard. And Bronn is there as Master of Coin. He had a short subplot where Cersei hired him to kill her brothers. He tracked them down, like, make me a better offer. And they're like, well, if we win, you can have Highgarden. So yeah, out of everyone, Bronn basically won the Game of Thrones. He went from nothing to High Lord. King Bran rolls up to the meeting. Bran's like, hey guys, I'm gonna be a real chill hands-off king. You guys are on the realm, just don't screw it up too bad. Sansa is named Queen in the North. It's very nice for her, and the Northern Lords get to chant again. Arya decides to set sail for adventure. She's gonna find out what's west of Westeros, but no one's ever made it before, so unless there's been huge advancements in ship technology, her voyage is probably doomed. Up at the wall, it's Jon Snow. It's like, wait a minute, the White Walkers are defeated. Is there even a Night's Watch anymore? No, there's not. It's just his bro Tormund and the Wildlings. They're like, hey, we're going home north of the wall, and he's like, yeah, I guess I'll roll with. So Jon Snow, the bastard who was a king, constantly fighting for the realm above his own wants and needs, rides off into the sunset. And that's how Game of Thrones comes to an end. It's been an epic journey. My first ever video was Game of Thrones Season 1. Watch that whole playlist now and relive all the amazing Game of Thrones. Plus me five years ago, I had awesome long hair. The biggest show of the decade may finally be over, but there's a lot more awesome TV out there and the recaps are going to keep coming. So hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Man of Recaps.